Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Wen Chongxiao from Beihang University in China. And today I will talk about our work, Task 2, Distributed Graph Computation for Machine Learning. This is a joint work with my colleagues in Microsoft Research. As we all know that machine learning is widely used to address the real-world production challenge. For example, the recommendation system drives the movie websites like Netflix. And the topic model is helping the news classification. The click prediction algorithms helps the advertisement displayed in the search engine. Many machine learning tasks have inherent graph structure. In the recommendation systems, users rate the items. And so the users and items can be modeled as the vertex in the graph. Therefore, the rating behavior of a user to an item can be considered as the edge in the graphs. The same in the topic model problems, a document will naturally contain a lot of words. Such an inclusion relationships can be modeled into a graph. And in the click prediction problems, the training data will contain many training samples. Each samples will touch multiple features. So the samples, features, and their relationships construct a graph. To address such machine learning problems with the graph structure, distributed graph engine could be a good choice. It has several advantages. And first, graph engine typically adopts the simple programming model like guess. And user only needs to write, uh, gather, apply, and scatter three functions. And system will schedule these three phases in order and apply the user defined functions to all vertexes. So, it is proved to be a good abstraction for the graph applications like page rank, sortist path, and so on. The second advantage is that graph engine can apply a lot of graph aware optimizations in many aspects. Several previous works have demonstrated such optimizations for the data layer which benefits the memory access and the partitioning which balance the workload and reduce the network traffic. Note that those optimizations are usually transparent to the users, and while they are well utilized by a lot of graph applications. The third one is the scalability. In 2015, three papers proved the great scalability of graph engine in chilling edge graphs. However, we observed that there are problems exist supporting machine learning on on the existing graph engines. Firstly, when modeling machine learning into the graph structure, it often introduces heterogeneous vertices. The recommendation problems in the machine learning naturally contains the user and the item vertex, which have different properties. However, existing graph engines mainly support the homogeneous graph, which is common for the traditional graph workloads. For example, in page rank, each vertex represents a web page, and all vertices have the same properties in the computation. Directly apply such homogeneous graph into homogeneous graph model into the heterogeneous machine learning algorithms will introduce overhead in both the programming and efficiency. Secondary, mini batch is an important concept in the machine learning, while it's missing in the graph engine. In machine learning, mini-batch means to use just a subset of the training sample to update the whole model within one batch. In graph, supporting machine learning means that the graph engine should have the capability to illuminate just a subset of the graph for a batch in arbitrary numbers of vertex and edges. However, existing graph engines do not, have, uh, do not support such an important feature. Thirdly, machine learning workloads may desire different consistency models. In distributed graph engines, several workers will work together to process the whole graph and wait at the end of the iterations for the hard barrier. While in machine learning, hard barriers in every mini batch will introduce too much synchronization overhead. Since the machine learning algorithms are typically error tolerance, they may converge even with the steel state. So it's good to support the flexible consistency using the softer barrier 
allowing faster workers to continually make progress. To address these problems, we propose task two, to bridge the graph and the machine learning research in one system using a unified model. We extend the graph engine for distributing machine learnings in three aspects, scheduling, data modeling, and programming. In scheduling, we adopt the still synchronized parallel in graph engine, allowing users to trade off the convergence and efficiency. And in data modeling, we support a heterogeneous data model and apply specific optimization on it. In the programming abstractions, we extend the gas model to a brand new mega model. And it allows the expressions of mini batch. And it also supports the flexible stage competitions for efficient execution of machine learning algorithms. With those new features, TAPS2 outperforms both graph and the machine learning systems on, those, on the represented machine learning algorithms. And here, Task 2 outperforms power graph and power IRA for over an order of magnitude. The great improvement is mainly due to our new mega model and the heterogeneity optimizations. Comparing with the machine learning systems, pattern and parameter servers, the Task 2 achieves at least 48% speed up thanks to the graph based optimization. Before discussing the system design details, I will at first introduce the system architecture of Task 2 as the background. As the fig this figure shows the overview of Task 2. In Task 2, a graph is partitioned into n partitions, and each server typically owns one partition. In each partition, Task 2 maintains the vertex and the edge in separate arrays. The edge in the edge arrays are grouped by the source vertex. Task 2 adopts the vertex cut approach. The edge set of the high degree vertex can be split into multiple partitions. Each partition will maintain a replica of the vertex. And one of these replicas is designated as the master vertex, maintaining the master version of the vertex data. The remaining replicas are called mirrors, and each maintains a local cache copy. We adopt the vertex cut approach because it connect, it, if it is effective, it is proved to be effective in handle the, in handling the power law graph. And it connects naturally to the parameter server models. The master versions of all vertices data can be treated as the global state of the stored in the server side of the parameter server. In the next several slides, I will introduce our three key designs in scheduling, data modeling, and programming. Let's at first look at how SSP works in Task 2 to provide a configurable consistency model for the users. Here's a figure I used the slack of one clock as example to show you how SSP works in Task 2. In Task 2, the clock of SSP is defined in the server, server level for each mini batch. And here in the figure, the dotted rectangle means the working set of current mini batch. And this figure shows the case that all servers finish the clock one. So the updates of the tasks are guaranteed visible to all servers. Then they continue. In clock two, not all the servers finish at the same time, which is also common in the BSP model. And here, the case is that the slowly server, which is server n in these figures, is still in clock two. However, server zero already complete all the tasks in clock two. Because SSP tolerates a one clock slack, the server zero can continue to work on the clock three, processing the data of the third mini batch. When server zero finishes clock three, it is possible that the slowly server n is still in clock two. Therefore, they reach the max slack bound defined by the user. The fastly server, server zero, is blocked. Our second major extension is to enable task two to be aware of the heterogeneities in machine learning using a heterogeneous data model. For example, 
logistic regressions in graph model have the sample and feature vertex. Different vertices have different properties. Sample vertex have the have label field, while feature vertex have the weight and gradient field. In the data model of task two, we allow the user to define their own vertex and specify the vertex with different types. Such heterogeneity awareness certainly has several benefits. One obvious benefit is that it is possible to arrange the data into a more compact data structure, resulting in the better data locality. Besides, heterogeneity can help the efficient executions and reduce the network traffic. Due to the limited time, I will only talk about the case for the compact data structure and efficient executions. Here, for compact data structure, I will continue to use logistic regressions as an example. In the existing graph engine, the vertex are usually placed in only one vertex array, assuming the homogeneous data type of both vertices. In this figure, the green field of the sample vertex and the yellow field of the feature vertex are considered useless and harmful to the data locality. In task two, we arrange different types of vertex into different data arrays. For example, in this case, the sample vertex are in the sample array and the feature vertex are in the, sample, are in the feature array. Therefore, the data structure is more compact. Furthermore, heterogeneity also benefits the execution a lot. Here, I will use the mini-batch MF for recommendation as a case to explain. In the recommendations, the items are usually in high degree. For example, a movie can be watched by millions of people. So the item vertex are partitioned into multiple servers through the vertex card. And the user nodes are typically in low degree. Therefore, they are only maintained in local. To assess the edge for the model training, we can either choose to illuminate edge from the user node or from the item node. These two approach look similar, but the performance are different. Here I will show you the case one by one. If we scan the edge from the user vertex, the items are updated accordingly. After the illumination, the items are needed to sync up between the master and mirror vertex to update the state. And let's consider the case to illuminate the edge from the item side. The items will be assessed one by one. And in this case, the users are updated separately. So there are benefits exist in the scanning the face when, when scanning I, the edge from the item side. In the thinking phase, the item nodes are in sequential access for better locality. Besides, we don't need to trace the updated vertex because they are already aligned in a continual array. To conclude, scan items will help to avoid random memory access and reduce the tracing overhead, therefore making the execution more efficient. In task two, with heterogeneity awareness, we allow users to choose a proper site for illumination. Our third key design is the mega model. And here, I will use the mini batch MF for recommendation as an example to show you how to program using the mega model and how mega model works. In the graph view of the recommendation problems, users are modeled into vertex from U0 to UM and items from I0 to IN. The rating behavior of a user to an item is considered to be an edge between that user and the item vertex. The goal of this algorithm is to come up with the model that the predicted rating of the each edge calculating by the related user and item parameters is similar to the ground truth rating. In the mega model, user program the exchange function for each edge like this. The, in the exchange functions, at first, the parameters of the user is read to calculate the predictive value. Then with the predictive value, the loss can be calculated and summed up in the worker level context. With the loss of the current rating, the gradient can be calculated and it is used to update the weight of the both user and item vertex. So this 
exchange function shows a typical case for machine learning in graph. The computation needs to read and write both two sides of vertex in one edge. It will introduce two guess phase if it is written in the guess model, resulting in unavoidable overhead from the barriers and extra stages. And here, the applied function is very simple, just to sum up the accumulated data weight. In addition to programming for the edge and vertex, task two, you, in task two, user needs to compose the stage to build execution flow for their own algorithms. Here, I continue to use the mini batch MFX example to explain. Here, the left figure shows the execution flow while the right figure shows how it will be executed in task two. To enable the mini batch, we certainly should have the mini batch stage. At first, let's look at the first mini batch. The exchange functions in the last lines will be applied in all edge of the current mini batch. And after the exchange phase is done, the apply phase will sync up the master and mirror vertex to update the state. Then it move to the second mini batch, doing the exchange and apply phase again. So there's a loop in the mini batch stage. It will iterate until all mini batches are done. After the mini batch stage is done, the total loss for one worker is calculated, and we can use a global sync phase to sum up the total loss for the current import from all workers. Therefore, we can compare the total loss of the current import to the to the total loss of the last epoch to determine whether this model is converged or not. To compose the execution stage like this, user only needs to write several lines of code listed here. Task to provide the simple and straightforward interface in the stage sequence builder to allow user to easily link all stages. The arbitrary stage competitions makes the mega model more flexible to express the complicated machine learning algorithms efficiently. We carefully verified our design and compared to other related systems on an exclusive clusters with the modern architecture. We implement MF, LDA, Block PG, three typical machine learning algorithms. We evaluate our performance using large-scale data set, up to 64 billion edge graph from the public data set to the private production data set. Due to the limited time, I will only show you some representative results here. We compare task two with parameter, parameter servers on 32 servers and achieves a 48% speed up. Here, the left figure is the parameter servers, while the right figure is task two. Here, the x-axis is the thread ID of all servers, and the y-axis is the runtime of the one-minute batch. From the figures, we can clearly see that the great improvements is mainly from the awareness of the graph structure to balance the workloads through the vertex cut. Such an experiment also supports our point that the machine learning algorithms should be implemented on top of the graph engine, which can easily benefit from the optimization technologies of the graph community. We compare task two with the state-of-art graph engine, Power Graph and Power Lyra on matrix factorization. And the comparison shows that we achieve more than an order of magnitude performance improvement, which mainly comes from our mega model and the heterogeneity optimizations. In conclusion, task two advocates the converge of graph computation and distributed machine learning. We make a critical step toward these directions by introducing important machine learning concepts into graph computation and defining a new flexible graph model to express the machine learning algorithms efficiently. We demonstrate that task two outperform existing graph and machine learning systems on representative machine learning algorithms respectively. Going forward, we hope that task two will provide a common foundations for further research in both graph computation and distributed machine learning, allowing more machine learning algorithms and optimizations to be expressed 
and implement it easily and efficiently at scale. Thanks. I'm happy to take questions. Hi, Phil Gibbons, CMU. Uh, how about the time for the partitioning? When you're comparing versus, say, Petrium that doesn't have to do any partitioning, did you assume the graph was already partitioned and then you started measuring? Because a lot of times that partitioning cost is actually the killer, right? Yeah, partition is an uh, important matrix in the graph computation. And in our work, we mainly target the computation part. And in the, in the paper, we also said we use the same partitions as the power lyra. But, but can you tell us just off, I mean, what is the number? What, what? Uh, so. How much worse does your system perform in that one graph you showed if you include the partitioning time? Uh, actually, I don't have the uh, exact number, but the, we can use the, very simple hash partitions, and it will, it's a, it's a, stre it's a streaming partitions, and which takes the, I, I think it's uh, OE uh, complexities to partition the whole graph. Okay. I mean, all right. I mean, prior work has shown that's a really killer step, right? Okay. So.